the first of two candidates we will be hearing from tonight running for New York State Assembly for District 65 in Manhattan. Grace's response to the Amplify Her questionnaire identified her priorities as fair and affordable housing, equitable pandemic recovery, and an equitable public education system. You named fully funding our city's public schools and CUNY as one of your top three priorities should you take office. How would you build support for this in Albany? Hi everyone, nice to see you tonight. Yes. Um, well, I think that we need to be talking about how education is a, a provides real opportunities and is one of the main ways for mobility for low income and middle class families. And so, um, you know, I think that uh, working with education advocates, working with um, CUNY, working with the UFT to make sure that um, the, the message gets out there and that we are prioritizing um, education in the budget is critical. We know that during this pandemic that students really fell behind. Uh, there are considerable learning gaps um, for our children uh, as a result of this pandemic and the remote learning that we had to do for you know, close to two years. It should be an absolute priority of this administration, of legislators right now, to invest in our children, to invest in education, and also to invest in the support services that families and also college students need right now to succeed through education. Thank you. An audience member from Manhattan asked, can you speak to the failures of the recently passed New York State budget and what you would do if elected to achieve a result that more equitably invests in New York State's communities, given the current realities of the budget process? That's a great question. Um, you know, we had a historic moment coming out of a pandemic with federal revenues to create an equitable budget that prioritize people first. And what we did with that budget is we funded a $1 billion stadium in Buffalo to a billionaire. So what does that say about our priorities? We didn't provide funding to exclude workers. We did not expand universal childcare to the degree, to the degree that families need it, particularly to the undocumented. Uh, we also did not achieve fair pay for home care workers uh, as you know the previous uh, candidate had spoken about how critical that is for those um, essential workers to be paid fairly so as an elected official um, I will be fighting for a budget that reflects the needs and the re the needs of our communities and not corporate interests and billionaires Are you open to accepting donations from real estate developers, landlords, and or corporate lobbyists? Why or why not? Thank you for that question. I am very proud to say that I do not take any money from real estate developers, corporate PACs, uh, lobbyists, special interests, police unions. Um, I think all of that money um, should stay out of politics. I am also proud to be a candidate who has fought day in and day out against uh, corporate interests. I have been fighting for the last several years against one of the most powerful real estate interests in Lower Manhattan, the Howard Hughes Corporation, and have been winning. I've also had a lot of great success fighting for tenants' rights um, against abusive and neglected, land, neglected, you know, neglectful landlords um, in the Lower East Side, helping protect the housing rights of uh, deaf tenants and have been successful in helping to get them repairs to their apartments, new elevators, and handicap, uh, and wheelchair accessibility into their buildings. So, um, you know, the, you can just look at my track record, and I think it speaks to myself as to how I will be a legislator and how I will represent this district. Thank you. Thank you. New York City has the most segregated school system in the country. Given your experience as a parent activist, what specific changes would you fight for to integrate our schools in an equitable way? So one of the things, and you know, I have a really split district. Um, it includes some of the richest, wealthiest zip codes 
in New York City as well as some of uh, the lowest income zip codes in, in New York City. And one thing that we need to ensure a more equitable education system is to make sure that schools are fully funded across the district. We have, I have a public school in my, in my district that raises $500,000 a year in PTA funds, where we have other schools that can barely raise $1,000. So we need to make sure that every school gets the funding they need for teacher training programs, for um, extracurricular activities, and um, you know, and especially the schools and low-income neighborhoods, that we ensure that they have the, um, you know, that they have other services to support families. I'm a big supporter of community, uh, community schools with wraparound services that help families in other ways apart from just um, education. You know, whether that's um, you know providing washers and dryers in buildings, providing other um, parental support. Um, and also after school programs. You now have the opportunity to speak about a policy issue of your choice that the previous question did not give you the chance to highlight. You have two minutes. So, um, you know, I think one of the biggest issues that we have across New York State, but particularly in my district in Lower, in lower Manhattan is housing. And I will fight for good to pass good cause eviction. Was very disappointed to see that that was not passed in the budget. We need to protect tenants' rights in New York City and across New York State. We also need to pass policies that protect, uh, that create truly affordable housing uh, in New York City. We need to make sure that bills like 421A do not continue uh, in, in New York State. We cannot continue to provide corporate giveaways. Uh, for luxury housing that does not create real affordable housing in our communities. Um, the other thing that I think is really important in this, um, you know, in my district is preserving affordable housing. We have uh, currently a development that is looking to be purchased by an, a developer and flipped over. Um, they're going to flip over 400 units uh, to market rate apartments. This is unacceptable. We need to be fighting for our tenants. We need to be fighting for more affordable housing, and I know that I can do that because I've been doing it for many years now. Thank you.